All right, well, hi, and welcome to week one of our church-wide series on fields and thrones. I'm Roger Wilson. I'm executive pastor of ministries here at VCKC. As we press into this series, I'm really excited that we're all spending these next several weeks focusing on the same things. I believe God is going to bring a sense of togetherness. I also know that you and your group are going to really enjoy this, and I'm praying that it's a rich experience for you all. So for this week, I want to focus on really two events and themes that emerge from Scripture this week. The first is trusting God for what we need and not just for what we want. And secondly, not playing the compare game. So I'm, I'm always amazed that while things are ever-changing, uh, they seem to stay the same throughout history. The same things humanity has always struggled with continue to be struggles for us even today. You know, I, I remember when Janine and I were early in our marriage, we spent our first several years chasing after the dreams that we had of lucrative careers, a home, a family. You know, God's been so good to us, and we were doing really well, but God began to shake things up for us in about 2006. My corporate job uh, in financial services was going really great, but I'd also found a great place serving at Vineyard. I was working in our youth ministry as a power volunteer, and one evening at a summer camp, I thought for sure that God was calling me to a life of full-time pastoral ministry. As Janine and I explored this notion, it was obvious that the timing wasn't right. And I was angry. I was frustrated. I thought for sure I knew what God wanted. However, God knew what I needed. And so for the next three years, God worked in my life and ironed out the right circumstances that I needed. Looking back, I wasn't ready. I needed more humility. I needed more grace. I needed more faith in my life. God knew it, and he orchestrated the things in his timing so that I could shift careers a few years later. I know I would have blown it if I would have gotten what I wanted. And isn't that true of our lives? Isn't it better to get what we need rather than what we want? And this is exactly what we see with the Israelites in this passage of Scripture. Let's quickly pick up in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Samuel the prophet, he's nearing the end of his life. He's approached by the people of Israel, and they came asking for a king. This request in and of itself doesn't seem to be all that unreasonable, but when you understand all that has led up to this moment, it makes a little more sense. You see, when God established the Israelites as a nation, it was his intention that he himself would be their king. He gave them laws to follow. And, and doesn't that sound like a great setup? People under the rule and the reign of God independently governing themselves, no king, no ruling class to subjugate people. Well, this setup didn't really work out because in short, the people couldn't exercise self-control. They couldn't operate in unity. So God gave them judges and prophets to help guide their daily living and to organize the civility. Now, there's much more to the story. And as you can imagine, there's more complexity to this situation. But what we see is that all this still wasn't good enough. The people didn't want what God gave them. 1 Samuel 8, verse 6 says, But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, Listen to all the... Oh, i got to say that again. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, Listen to all the people are saying to you. It's not you they've rejected, but they've rejected me as their king. There's something to be said at looking at our situation and lives and trusting that God is going to give us what we need. Learning to operate where we're trusting God to provide for us what we need, not what we want. But I'm asking myself, what was the driving factor? What was the attitude for the people of Israel? And this brings out my next point. They were caught up in playing this compare game with the people around them. In 1 Samuel 8, 4 and 5, it says, So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You're old and your sons do not follow your ways, 
Now appoint a king to lead us such as all other nations have. You see, they were looking around at other nations and they envied what those other nations had, even though they had God himself. Comparison is such a dangerous game. We can get lost comparing ourselves to the people around us so much that we waste time and energy on envy. I heard it said this way one time, comparison is like watering and fertilizing your neighbor's lawn and then wondering why your lawn is so ugly. (laughs) Envy and comparison rob us of precious time and energy. We lose sight of the moments God's placed in our path because our focus lies elsewhere. So wouldn't you agree that comparison is a big problem in our culture? Well, it was in ancient times as well. The Israelites wanted to be like everyone else. So we must be careful to not let comparison be the drivers in our lives. All right, so before you break out into your discussion time, let me just encourage you to really dive into this series with an open heart and open mind. Well, as we've seen in this passage, there's nothing new under the sun. People have struggled with the same things since ancient times. So challenge yourselves to learn from these ancient truths because they're practical for our daily lives and they'll help us grow as we launch into the rest of the series. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the series.